this class first I will discuss that how, how we can calculate the start force bending moment uh, in the oval for best excavation, then I will discuss about the underground conduit. So, first I am solving one problem related to the base excavation and I will show you how we can determine the uh, start forces for the base excavation. Okay. So, I am uh, taking one problem that this is the wall. Okay. Sometimes, if it is the permanent structure, then this can be diaphragm walls are also used. So, that means, this, this can be temporary structure, it can be sheet pile for permanent wall also uh, or permanent structure, it can be the sheet uh, diaphragm walls or in the sheet pile also. Okay. So, this is the uh, brace excavation ground level, this is the wall, okay. this is the dredge level. So, here, so these things will continue below the dredge level. So, here I will discuss only the determination of start force above the dredge level. Okay. So, this is the dredge level. So, you can see that so here this is the dredge level. Okay. So, this one is the this is the dredge level or here this is the dredge level. Okay. So, this is the d l or here this is the d l or the dredge level fine. So, similarly, I am also drawing this type of problem. So, so this is the ground level and this is the dredge level. Okay. Now, we have four start system excavation system. So, this is one start, this is another start and this is the third start and fourth start is placed as the dredge level. Okay. So, this is first, second, third, fourth. Sometimes you cannot place a uh, start in the dredge level. So, in that uh, position you have to remove that start, but here this is the four start and the spacing vertical spacing is given 1.5 meter the first one, second one is 2.5 meter from the first one and then this is also 2.5 meter and this one again 1.5 meter. Okay. And the soil properties gamma unit weight is 18 kilo Newton per meter cube and C u value is equal to 30 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. So, the distribution as I mentioned that first we have to check that way whether what is the value of that gamma h divided by C or C u. So, gamma is 18 and h value is calculate this h value is 2.5, 2.5 and then 3. So, this is total 8 meter. So, h value is 8 meter. So, this is 18 into 8 divided by 30. So, that equal to 4.8. So, which is greater than 4. So, ideally we should use if it is greater than 4, then we should use this distribution, okay? because it is greater than 4. We should use this distribution, okay? but this value is 4.8, very close to 4. So, what I will do? I will check both the distribution, then I will decide which one I will use as this value is very close to 4, but as it is close to greater than 4. So, theoretically you can directly use that, that is not a issue, but I will check that and then I will use uh, uh, use based on the values that I will got, I will get. Okay. So, the so first uh, the distribution uh, that I am checking that my P A is gamma H minus 4 C u. 
Okay, gamma is 18, H is 8 minus 4 into C u is 30. So, this is 24 kilo Newton per meter square. So, if it is the third one, third distribution, if I get the another distribution, then my P a I am taking 3 gamma H. Okay. So, this is 0 0.3 into 8, 18 into 8. So, this is given 43.2 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. So, now this is 42, 3.2 kilo Newton per meter square, this is 24. So, and this value is this uh, gamma is divided by C u value is very close to uh, a 4. So, I will consider this one, okay. but theoretically you can consider 24 also, but as 20, 20 this is 43.2 kilo Newton per meter square, which is greater than 24. So, I am using 43 as the as the uh, um, your stress distribution, but I will take that your distribution is the fourth one, but the value I am taking the second one because you can see that my this is distribution is I am using this one, but value I am taking the second one. Okay just clear this thing, because as gamma is divided by C is greater than 4, it is 4.8. That is why I am taking the distribution of the soft to medium clay, but value I am taking for steep clays, because that as it is very close to 4. But you can consider the distribution of soft clay as well as you can also consider the 24 kilo Newton per meter square, that is also correct. Okay, so, to be on the safe side, I am considering the 43 point, 43 point uh, your how much? 43.2 kilo Newton per meter square distribution uh, uh, UDL value and, uh, this, and uh, pressure value and the distribution I am taking the right one. Okay? So, clear that. So, that is why I am, uh, so now Okay, so, I will take this distribution and this value is 43.2 kilo Newton per meter square and this is the distribution. So, this one is you know this is the 2 meter, this is h by 4. So, 2 meter and remaining one is 6 meter. Okay. So, now what I will do, I will take this sheet pile and this base uh, start system and then divide them in small segment and consider that one particular beam. So, this is the particular one small one. So, I am considering this is one beam. Okay. So, this is the reaction is R 1 and this is R 2 dash. So, this is the first uh, start reaction and this is the beam of this sheet pile. Okay. And then I am considering the next one. So, this is R 2 double dash and R 3 dash. This is 3. Then the next one, this is R 3 double dash and then this is R 4. Okay. And the distribution you can see, so here your distribution will be something like that. Here distribution is uniform, here distribution is uniform. Okay. So, this is 43.2 kilo Newton per meter square, this one is distribution is uniform, this is also 43.2 kilo Newton per meter square. Here, this is also 43.2 kilo Newton per meter square, but remember that this is 2.5 meter, this is 1.5 meter, because this is 1.5 meter, this is 2.5 meter, but this value is 2 meter. Okay. So, the remaining one total is 2.5 plus 1.54. So, this one is also 2 meter. Okay. 
and this is 2.5 meter and this is also 1.5 meter. So, depending upon the number of start, so I have taken this small segment. So, this is the distribution, this distribution, I am talking about this distribution that I have divided in number of parts for the simplified analysis. Th these things I have done to simplify this analysis. As I mentioned, this is a simplified analysis. Okay? And remember that, that your R 2 is R 2 dash plus R 2 double dash and R 3 is R 3 dash plus R 3 double dash. Okay? So, now what I will do for the first one. So, the uh, first uh, beam, second beam and the third beam. So, now I if I take the first beam, then this is R 1, R 1 into I am taking the moment from this point, okay? from this R 2 dash point. So, R 1 into 2.5 that will be the total uh, first triangle then the rectangle, triangle 1 half into 2 into 43.2 liberum will be 2 meter plus from here this is one third of 2. Okay? Then plus this rectangle which is 2 meter into 43.2 and liberum will be 2 divided by 2. Okay? So, if I solve that I will get R 1 is equal to 80.6 kilo Newton per meter. Okay? Now, as I mentioned that there is two spacing of this star system. So, one is vertical that I have given horizontal spacing S H was given 2 meter. Okay? So, the total force this is for the for the uh, one start and this is kilo Newton per meter. So, now the total force force in start 1 okay, is equal to R 1 into S H okay, the horizontal spacing. So, this will be 80.6 into 2. So, this will be equal to 161.2 kilo Newton. Similarly, okay, similarly, solving the second beam for second beam, or two, we will get that after solving that, we will get that R two. So, yeah, from the first beam also that R 2 dash will give you that R 2 dash plus R 1 is equal to R 2 dash plus R 1 is the total force. Total force is the triangle first half into 2 into 43.2 plus 2 into 43.2. Okay? So, that is equal to 129.6 kilo Newton per meter. So, and R 1 is 80. So, R 2 dash is equal to 129.6 minus 80.6. So, this is equal to 49 kilo Newton per meter. Okay? So, similarly from beam 2, so similar way we can determine that R 2 double dash is equal to R 3 dash because it is symmetric, okay? loading is symmetric is equal to 54.0 kilo Newton per meter. So, my R 3 is equal to or R 2 is equal to R 2 dash plus R 2 double dash. So, this is equal to 49 plus 54. So, this will be equal to 103 kilo Newton per meter. So, total force in start 2 will be 103 into 2 that is equal to 206 
kilo newton. Okay. Similarly, from beam 3, I can write that R 3 double dash is equal to R 4 is equal to 32.4 kilo newton per meter. So, the total force in start 3 will be equal to R 3 dash plus R 3 double dash into 2. So, this will be equal to 172.8 kilo Newton. Similarly, total force in start 4 will be 32.4 into 2 that will be 64.8 kilo Newton. So, this way we can determine what is the start force acting on the different in the different starts. Okay. So, this is the total start force. Now, what I will do? I will calculate the maximum because this there is a Euler beam. So, here this is the beam. Okay. So, here also this is the beam. So, what is the maximum moment acting on this beam? So, here also on this beam I can write the I can assume that on the beam one concentrated load is acting. So, here the maximum concentrated load is acting as this is the load 103. Okay. So, I can write the maximum moment or m max is equal to this is the concentrated load and here this will be the spacing because if I can write this is the your plan this is the spacing S H this is the spacing S H and your concentrated load is acting on this this is the Euler beam and these are the start. Okay. So, here the concentrated load is acting. So, here you can see this is the middle and this is the middle. So, I can concentrated load I assume that one concentrated load is acting which is 103 kilo Newton per meter and this is the S H. Okay. So, gamma m max will be R 2 a square divided by 8 or S H square. Okay. So, R 2 8 hundred 0 3 S is 2 square divided by 8. So, this is 51.5 kilo Newton per meter. So, this is the maximum moment acting in beam or Euler beam. So, now I will calculate what is the maximum moment is acting in the start. Now, if I consider uh, maximum moment acting in the sheet pile or the wall. Okay. So, now this is the different start position. Okay. So, now if I draw the shear force diagram, force diagram, then the shear force diagram will be something like this. Okay. So, this is will be the shear force distribution. So, I want to calculate the maximum force and maximum force will be here where shear force will be 0 maximum bending moment. This is the maximum bending moment where your S f is equal to 0. So, this is the maximum bending moment point and I say that value is A x from the from this side okay, from the ground level. So, I have to calculate what is the x value. So, x point your shear force is 0 you can see from this diagram. Okay. So, I can write here at if I draw the distribution that this is 1.5 meter and this one is 2.5 meter okay. and here the distribution is like this and your x value is somewhere in between that. Okay. This is 2 meter and this value is again 43.2 kilo Newton per meter. 
Okay. So, now I have to calculate the x value. First, I will calculate the shear force. So, shear force at x. So, shear force at x, this is, is equal to 80.6 kilo Newton. Okay. That I have already calculated that this is 80.6, the first one, the force in first uh, is a, this is the 80.6 80, 80 kilo Newton per meter. This is the R 1 first start. So, similarly, this is 80.6 kilo Newton per meter. So, the shear force, shear force at x will be first the triangle that is half into 2 into 43.2 plus this rectangle, this rectangle is this one is x minus 2, this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle will be x minus 2 again 43.2, then minus because this things is acting this direction and this force is acting opposite direction. So, this is will be 80.6 that is equal to 0. So, after solving that I can write your x is equal to 2.866 meter. Now, what is the maximum bending moment? So, here is the maximum bending moment from the x. So, first I will take the triangle. So, triangle is half into 43.2 into the 2 is the height. So, this is the force. Then the lever arm will be is equal to your this is 2.866, this is 2. So, this value will be 0.866 meter because this is 2, this one is total x is 2.866 meter. So, this total one rectangle portion is 0.866. So, the lever arm from the x, I am taking the moment at x. Okay. So, lever arm from the x will be 0.866 plus one third into 2 okay? plus the rectangle 1, rectangular 1 will be 0.866 into 43.2 into 0.866 divided by 2. Then this force, this force is minus will be 80.6 into into this total one 2.866 and this one is 1.5. So, this will be 2.866 minus 1.5. Okay? So, then the total moment is coming out to be minus 27.6 kilo Newton per meter. So, this way we can determine what is the start force is acting, what is the maximum moment in the wall what is the maximum moment in the beam. So, maximum moment in the wall or the sheet pile is this one, maximum moment in the beam is this one and the start forces are. So, total start forces is this one, then 64.38 this value and the 42 this value. This is for the first start, second start third start, fourth start. Okay? So, this way we can determine the forces and the moments acting in the bracing system. Okay? But this is a simplified analysis. If you want to do the actual analysis, then you have to do or solve it numerically. So, next one that I will start is the, the another topic, which is the your underground conduct and that will be the last topic of this course. Okay? So, that I will start, I will explain what are the application areas of the underground conduct and what is the load sharing mechanism. Okay? So, this is the use of underground conduct. So, what is the underground conduct? So, that can be used in drains, shares, gas line, water mains, culverts and tunnels. Okay? These are the application areas and then, so classification of the underground conduct. So, these are the uh, classification of underground conduct. So, first the ditch conduct. So, it is installed in a narrow ditch and cover with earth backfill. So, this is your our natural. 
So, this is the natural surface. So, it is installed here. This is the conduct. Okay. So, is the circle one is the conduct. It can be either tunnel, it can be pipeline. Okay. So, this is the conduct which is installed and above that the back filling is done. If this type of conduct is there, so this is your natural ground surface. So, this conduct is installed in a narrow backfill and covered with earth dam. And remember that your natural ground surface is above the conduit. That means, when excavation is done on the narrow ditch is constructed, then the conduit is placed and then the backfilling is done. So, this type of conduct is called ditch conduct. Then another an example areas is drain, water lines, gas lines, etcetera. The positive projecting conduct is this type, where this is the natural ground and it is constructed like this and then above that a embankment is constructed. Okay. So, this is example of railway, highway, uh, culvert or tunnels. Okay. So, this is the second type of conduct. Then the third type of the third type of conduct is negative projecting conduct. So, here this is natural ground surface. So, here it is installed below the natural ground surface with some excavation and then this portion is filled with loose soil then above that the embankment is constructed. So, what is the idea of this loose soil? Because of this loose soil, the stress which is coming on the conduit is reduced. So, it is mentioned this uh, and the embankment is constructed. So, this to reduce the soil pressure. So, to reduce the soil pressure on pipe under an embankment. So, I will explain how the soil pressure is reduced under this type of arrangement. The fourth one is uh, the fourth one is the imperfect ditch conduit, which is similar to the negative projecting conduit, but the uh, pro, uh, difference is that this is the natural ground, then uh, excavation is done in the embankment itself. So, previous one you see this is the natural ground and excavation is done below the embark, uh, natural ground. Okay. And the fourth one, the excavation is done in the embankment, then where is the loose soil is done, a loose soil is filled or placed to reduce the stress acting on the conduit, then the embankment, this is the embankment which is constructed. So, the excavation is done within the embankment and this, uh, this is not recommended for embankment that serve as water barrier, because the loosely placed backfill will allow the water or the seepage through the embankment. Okay. So, this is the four types of uh, uh, conduit and then the important thing is the arching or the load theory. So, the theory of arching is used to compute the vertical load on conduit, which is very important. So, because of the soil arching, a significant amount of soil weight is transferred to the ditch wall, thus the load on the conduct is reduced. So, let me explain first, uh, say suppose this uh, problem we are taking. So, what is soil arching? Okay? Before that, uh, the definition is given, what is soil arching? Soil arching is transfer of pressure from the uh, yielding mass of soil onto the adjoining less yielding or rigid part. Okay. Now, this, this soil arching can be negative, soil arching can be positive also. First, let me explain what is the meaning of this transfer of stress from yielding mass of soil onto the adjoining less yielding of the rigid part. Okay. So, suppose if we have uh, this type of arrangement. Okay. Now, here what will happen that when the your this is the embankment and this is the loose soil. So, this loose soil will deform more compared to this compacted soil or this natural ground, because this is the loose soil, this will deform more. Okay. So, deformation of this loose soil is more compacted compared to the surrounding soil. So, that means, it is the yielding part and this is the less yielding or the rigid part. So, this is the rigid part or this is the yielding or moving part. This is also digit part. 
So, what will happen? That, that means this portion is rigid, this portion is moving, which is deforming, or that means there will be a deformation of this part compared to this one. So, when this soil is deforming and this soil is rigid, it is less deformed soil. So, a shear plane will develop. This is deforming this downward direction, a shear plane is de developed at the surface of this yielding and less yielding of the or the rigid part. So, this is the shear plane which is developed. So, this shear plane will allow the stress from this portion to the uh, transfer the stress from this portion to here. So, that is the it is mentioned the transfer of stress from yielding part to the less yielding or the rigid part. So, because of the shear plane the stress is transferred from this yielding or moving or deformed part to the rigid part. So, the ultimately stress acting on this conduct will be reduced. So, that is called the soil arching. So, arching means the so it will transfer the stress through uh, from the yielding or the deformed part to the less yielding or less deformed or the rigid part. Okay. So, that will help to reduce the stress. Okay. So, now Similar thing will done here also because here also it is the loose soil. So now uh, this movement of the part can be two types. As I mentioned, soil arching can be two types. One is the positive, one is the negative. Suppose this is your structure. Okay, so this is the structure. Okay, this portion is the structure. Here, this is the structure. So this is the structure. Now, if the structure, uh, structure within the soil mass, so when this is the, uh, uh, so that means here we can cite the negative or positive or active or passive. So, the active arching means structure is more compressible than the surrounding soil. So, that is the case I have explained. That means this portion of the soil is deformed more compared to the surrounding soil. So, your structure is more deformation of the structure is more compared to the surrounding soil. So, here you, your structure is yielding part and the surrounding soil is your less yielding or rigid part. So, stress will transfer to the rigid or the soil. So, you can see the stress on the structure is less though it is if it is the embankment ideally it should be the uniform distribution of stress on the structure as well as the soil, but because of the soil arching it will not happen. Okay, you can see the stress on the structure is less whereas, the stress on the soil is more. So, this is called the active arching. Now, if it is opposite then it is called the passive arching where the soil is more compressible than the structure. That means, soil deformation is more compared to the structural deformation. So, what will happen now? The stress from the soil will come to the structure. Okay. So, you can see the stress on the structure is more compared to the stress in the soil. So, this is called the passive arching. So, because of this condition, passive arching condition, your stress on the structure will increase or stress on the rigid part. Here, the structure is more uh, uh, less compressible as compared to the soil. So, structure is the rigid part or the less yielding part. So, stress on the structure will increase compared to the soil. So, in the next class what I will do, I will uh, derive the expression uh, and or the equation and then I will explain how this stress transfer is happen from the soil to the structure or structures to the soil. So, here our intention to make this arrangement such that the stress will transfer from the structural part or the conduct part to the soil, so that the stress on conduct is reduced. Okay? So, in the next class I will discuss on that part. Thank you.